so the AU101 FXGT, the engine's been in for a little while now, but I've noticed it's been dropping a little few droplets of oil on the ground when you park it up. Um, so I can see it's coming from the top of the can cover, it's around the edge, it's a bit of oil, is it residue? It's probably come out of the distributor as well, and I can see it's running down, down the front edge of the head there to the block. The back's all clean. Um, so I'm just going to whip this off and put a new seal on it. It's pretty good underneath here. looking forward to seeing what's under here because it looks pretty cruddy like it hasn't had oil changes well what it should do the regular sort of oil changes cars in the shed now so I've just pulled off the top cover about to pull off the cam cam gear cover um, I'm just trying to get to this bottom one at the moment and then once that's off I can undo all these three here and the whole lot should just pull off and pull out this pipe here. It's pretty quick and simple. So it's pulled off the old can cover. I did realise though after pulling it off you probably don't actually need to take the whole thing off. Um, you probably just undo those top ones and then because there's a join there obviously and separate it. Oh well. It's all part of it. Um, so yeah I'm going to pull this off. So the cover's off now. I'm just actually expecting it to look a whole lot worse than what it is. It's a bit of carbon build up. But looking through the cap, I thought it was going to be really, really crap. But not too bad. It's a bit black, but eh, it is what it is. And inside the cover, it's yeah, just the general carbon build up, but nothing too extreme. Yeah, it's all old, brittle, and hard. So that's probably why it's leaking. Yep. So it's been cleaning up this cover. Um, it's been using the drill actually with the old Y wheel on the end, which makes the job a whole lot quicker. Just scratch out the bulk of the scum that was on the inside. If it was my favourite car, just um, blast it at work and make it nice. But since we're in lockdown, I can't actually um, make, work, make my way down to work. So fortunately I got some seals from my seal kit which I had to buy a while back. Which are up, in the, um, up on the shelf. So I'm just going to punch out all these seals and put all the new seals in. And clean up through all the edge and um, put the new seal on. Just punched out the seals, so I just used a 22mm uh, socket, just put it in there, and punched it, and it goes, pops it straight out. Uh, same with these, I just used this little thing, this little 8mm socket, and push, popped it out from the inside. Nice and simple. There we go. seals and just um, make sure this is all clean all the way right around and then you can start feeding the old seal in. This is a 20 valve black top seal that I'm actually sticking in. It's not actually for a silver top but they're both the same. So 
what the seals are in now. Um, these can go in last. These are just for the nuts that hold down the cover. And now I'm about to put in some gasket marker into the corners of where the distributor is. If you've done one of these before, you probably already know. But you just put a blob in each corner to stop any leaks and make sure all that flange is super clean. Gasket markers in all the corners. Um, also just a little tidy up of that little area there so when you open the oil cap up it doesn't look rank. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Time to slip it on. These nuts just been put on hand tight. They don't um, they only need to be done up to two newton meters of torque, so they don't need to crank right down. Just enough to give that firm pressure all around. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much that. Put the cover on, put the spark plugs um, leads back in, and then you're pretty much done. Another good thing too if you're doing this is to clean out the PCV valve. It's only a small little hole in the end there. So I just, just use some brake cleaner and my air compressor just to blow it through and make sure it's all freely moving. Because it could easily get clogged up and then overpressurized. So the covers are back on now, looking how it should. PCV valve is back in. Um, looking nice and clean there. Good visual. Um, Impression when you open it up, if you, when I eventually go to sell it, look, it'll look clean. Um, all the wiring bit is back in, covers on obviously, and all screwed in. So while I'm working on it, I was just thinking about on my black car when I put the 20 valve in. It's just some, just some subtle little things I've done to like improve the overall look of it when you look in the engine. It's not nothing big, but it all helps. So my other car, I actually removed this hook. So it looks um, nice and clean and presentable and just put it on the shelf for when I do eventually need to use it, which I did. Um, another thing I did do, if you're painting your covers, I took away all this um, casting marks all along, all around the cover. So it looks all nice and clean. Um, this is what I'm talking about here, it's all nice and clean. There's no casting mark along there now. So I just used like a sander. Um, so that's my one from my recar. And also, just up here, there's a little bracket that usually sits on here, which I've unbolted. Um, it's basically another one of these, but on this side. And then also my red car, because I had the open quad throttle bodies, I actually removed this bracket. So when you looked in there, it wasn't just sticking up at you. So it's nothing much, but just some subtle little changes. And if you're going to go extreme, you can take your battery and your boot. It actually gives a, a lot better look, and you can bring your air filter cleaner down to the corner. Another thing to make it look a little bit more fresher is I use like a little uh, toothbrush with the little metal bristles, and just went all around the throttle bodies and the tight gaps, and then the rest of it, I just used my drill with one of these things and just stuck in all these way cleaner, really nice, um, compared to what was there, which is all dark and oil residue and corrosion, so yeah, it makes a huge difference, just the little finer details. Another thing I've found actually is in this car, since I swapped this engine in, the idle air control valve it reads quite low um, when you first start it up, so it's almost like it's telling you that the engine's hot. But then when it does get hot, it revs quite high, around 1800, nearly 2000 revs. So I've just been reading on some YouTube clips. Some people put like a, a little, basically a bung in there, just to stop the airflow from going through. And it starts a little bit rougher, but if, as long as you're around the car to keep the revs up while it's dead cold, um, it helps when the engine's hot. I could raid the other valve up here. 
but I can't be bothered unbolting everything to get down to it. Especially when I'm not going to keep this car for ages and ages. Um, it's right down there, that plug. So this is what I was talking about, the, about the idle air control valve. I had like a washer in there, which is this one here. Which has brought the revs down fractionally, but not much. So what I'm going to do is weld up this hole, put it back in and test it. And then if it, if it struggles, then I'm just going to drill like a small hole in there, just a little bit, little bit of air flow through it. Because if I pull the plug out of the actual hole, um, control valve it sends up a fault code on dash, so I don't really want that. So I've just wired it up, center of this washer, um, and drilled one small hole for focuses, just so there is some sort of flow of some air, so it's not too crappy at idle, but um, we'll see how we get on. It's just a test and doesn't work well I'll drill, drill that bigger hole or block that hole up so just put that little wash thing back in and start it up um, so the wash thing just sitting in there as you can tell it's running a little bit lower than what, what it would but um, once it warms up it should be hopefully bring the revs down so this is the revs at cold so I may have to make that hole a fraction bigger, so it's just a little fraction out. But we'll wait until the engine gets warm and we'll see where the revs move to. Engine's now warm, it hasn't really crept up much at all. So I might have to pull that little washer piece out and drill like a fraction bigger hole, give it another test till we get it right. Ideally I want to have it revving just below one. So up a little bit more, if I can... Somewhere around there. That might help by a little bit more in the cold start. Before, when I was idling, at an intersection it used to be sitting up about near around there, just below the two. And it'd be annoying because the VVT does get loud when it's warm, so it'd sit about there. Um, and you're sitting in the intersection, it just sounds horrible. And everyone, well, it feels like everyone's looking at you, but they're probably not. So hopefully if I bring the revs down a bit, be a lot better. So before I drilled a two millimeter hole, this time I'm going to try a three. And if that doesn't work, I'll go up another size. But um, let's give it a test. So there we go. I drilled it one more millimeter bigger, and the revs have come up that much more. So I think I might just leave it that and see how we get on. Um, drive over for the next few weeks, and if it needs to be altered, I'll just um, might, might have to go for two and a half mil. So that might be the ideal size, but that's the easy, cheap way of doing it if your revs are too high. And um, without having to pull out your um, idle air control valve. See once it gets warm, gets the old noisy VVT pulley. But I think most of them have that, apart from this, because I've got a new pulley for it. day after working on the valve cover on the engine I noticed that um, when the car started up because the car hasn't been going during lockdown there's a lot of moisture leaking out through that join of the exhaust on that flange I'm just pulling it apart and gonna clean up the seal and reseal it up yeah, just to see how it sounds with just the one pipe and one open pipe Start it up, it's cold start, that new mod in the auto air control valve, so it's idling at one, it's pretty good. Not too low like it was before. Is all done. Just put a little bit of, bit of RTB silicon um, marker, that stuff that I use on the gaskets, just to put a bit of that around there and 
cleaned it up, cleaned all the flanges before that, and then I'll just cut off the excess once it's all set. 